The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. One, two, three, one, two, three. Uh, yes, let me see what we've got here. Okay, so uh, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Excuse my uh, lapse of uh, concentration for that moment. Um, how's the volume, folks? Can you hear me? Yes, you can, Hank. Hello, Hank. First day without air conditioning down there. Got an absolute heat wave in uh, southeast Australia and South Australia. And uh, um, a particular um, hello to uh, our friends up in uh, uh, the North America. I was talking to uh, Jerry today, who's uh, two hours from Chicago. Um, I was talking to um, uh, Terry, um, who's uh, our office is a place called Chatham in Canada, just across the border from Detroit, uh, and it's just freezing there. It's uh, <laughs> uh, glad to see everyone survive so far. I mean, it's just quite ridiculous, isn't it? Uh, all-time record cold at one end of the uh, planet, and all-time uh, record uh, heat at the other end of the planet. Uh, anyway, so uh, good to hear from you. Uh, Kevin White, cold wave here, 25 degrees below zero. Boy. Yeah, okay, look, uh, great to have you uh, with us, uh, folks, as usual. And um, uh, let me just say that we have still got this issue going on uh, of a problem with the microphone. Um, same problem we had uh, last uh, week, uh, a fortnight ago, uh, and the fortnight before that. We've had endless um, meetings and discussions with uh, GoToWebinar, uh, Citrix. Um, it's some uh, fault that just appears to be on our connection to them, uh, and it's very, very annoying with the uh, volume dropping out periodically. Um, what I do want to say is if we have that same problem today, um, I'm just going to stop. Um, and uh, redo the webinar and then post it so you don't miss it. So uh, if we do have any of those problems, uh, you certainly um, uh, have my uh, apologies for that. It's uh, uh, something we just haven't got round to fixing yet. Jeremy, hello, mate. Uh, uh, Dorset, South... Yeah, good. Good to have you over there, my friend. Um, uh, it's a problem we've, we've been having now for um, uh, over a month. Uh, we've tried different microphones, we've tried different uh, computers, all sorts of issues. So I'm sure we'll get it resolved, uh, but if it's not resolved today, please don't get frustrated with me. Just uh, uh, cut yourself off, go and do whatever it is you're going to do. Uh, stay warm if you're in the north, stay cool if you're in the south, um, and I will uh, redo it and post it. Um, so let's uh, see what we've got here. Okay, that's grand. Uh, good to have all our uh, regulars with us as always. Uh, and uh, wow, we've got a big turn up today. Um, Adrian, good to have you with us. Uh, he's a tutorial guy. Albert, good to have you. Uh, Bill, uh, Colin, yes, Colin, good to have you with us. Ewald, good to have Ewald with us. I hope you're trading, mate. If not, give me a call any time. We can have another session. Hank, uh, you, Janet, uh, over in Canada. Chad, I bet you're cold. Uh, good to have you with us. Jen, whoever Jen is, good to have you with us, Jen. Jeremy from UK, where we've got uh, from all around the world. Uh, John L. down in uh, Coffs Harbour. Uh, Keith, uh, Kevin, yes, of course. Mark, he's a tutorial guy. There's the next Mark, he's a tutorial guy. Uh, uh, Mike, uh, good to have you with us. I'm talking to you uh, next week, uh, Mike. Uh, Neil, he's a cotton farmer. Uh, he knows all about the problems with the weather. A good trader. He's uh, done a tutorial. Uh, and uh, good to have all of you uh, with us, Stephen. Uh, we've even got Terry with us today. Boy, we are on. We don't get Terry too often. And Tom, Tom, who's a smart guy. Tom is a uh, wealth fund manager, but his partner's up in New York. Um, and Tom runs the uh, Florida office, so he's a pretty smart guy. I guess that's a uh, uh, best, best place to be at the moment. Okay, um, let's talk a bit about uh, trading today. Um, let me uh, move along here and uh, see what we've got and why we haven't got whatever we want. Here it is. Okay, so let's uh, move on. So I talk to traders a bit, and um, uh, this, this is the usual lament. Um, uh, it's it's in your head, 
um, Ed and um, um, Hank and uh, Justin, you'll know what I mean. Uh, these are guys who know how to trade, uh, and uh, but they have uh, a problem uh, uh, just sticking to the system. They don't know. They're, they're nervous about holding trades, and um, it, boy, that's so common. Let me tell you, if you if you've uh, got that problem yourself, don't think you're on your own. It's the most number one, most common problem. People are, uh, are worried about holding trades, um, and. Uh, you know, when you talk to the short-term traders, they're, they're, they're absolutely violent about it. You know, I hear blokes saying, God, I wouldn't hold my trade overnight. You're leaving yourself and your family at the risk of the wolves, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and uh, truly, it isn't like that. Uh, if, you haven't, uh, if you're having that problem in particular, uh, go and help yourself to the 6S uh, signals. It's still free. Uh, we're still finalizing all sorts of uh, little matters with it. Uh, so it's still free. You only have to be registered with us. Give us a, uh, an email address and uh, register yourself for a username and uh, password, and you can actually you can uh, see the success signals every day. And try to follow them because with success, I give you a new signal uh, every day, so you know exactly where you you, you got to be every day. Uh, and just try and get used to letting these trades run. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the bad news is they don't run often enough or far enough, uh, but they do run, uh, and uh, that's your number one problem. It's in your head. I mean, uh, I had a mate. He's uh, he's dead now. He's a lovely bloke lived down in uh, uh, Tasmania. Uh, he was a psychologist, um, and uh, he was very interested in trading. Uh, he could never trade himself because of uh, nerves, uh, but he had a, a hell of a business counselling traders uh, to, to not have nerves about their trading and he, uh, he used to produce a CD every six months, very, very popular, did very well, a good business um, and uh, uh, what I'm trying to say to you is you don't need to see a psychologist, it's perfectly normal uh, to be apprehensive about uh, taking trades and losses but uh, you know, if you ever want to be a decent trader, uh, you've got to get to the state of being able to let those trades move because it's the trades that do run. They're not very frequent, but it's the trades that do run that put all the cream uh, on your equity curve. So it's um, absolutely vital. Uh, slippage is a pest. We've had talked to a few clients uh, this week about slippage. Uh, remember that, <coughs> excuse me, in electronic markets, um, which they almost all are now, uh, uh, your order is queued in the order in which it's received. Uh, so the earlier you post your signal, the less likely you are to have slippage. Uh, I was talking to uh, Prince Daniel, uh, you won't mind me telling you, during the week. Um, he's a pretty uh, big-sized trader, and he's uh, trying to trade um, uh, three or four or six um, palladium uh, contracts, and he's been finding that um, he gets uh, one, sometimes two at most, but he doesn't seem to get uh, a fill within the limits he's setting on his order. Um, and that's mainly because it's a fairly thin market, only has a volume of about 3,000 uh, units a day. Uh, but um, he's placing his orders six or seven hours after the market's open. If you get to placing your orders before the market opens or as soon as the market opens, you'll find you get much better fills and slippage becomes less of a problem. Now, uh, one of the ways we've got to work to uh, help you with that is I've got to get these signals in earlier. Uh, at the moment, we get our uh, end-of-day data uh, from um, a trade navigator, of course, uh, at some time shortly after 6.30 US Eastern Time. Um, and that means that we get uh, to place those orders. I get to post those orders uh, on or before um, normally 7.30 US Eastern Time. Uh, but uh, some of these markets have been open since uh, uh, 6 o'clock uh, or earlier. Um, and uh, that's uh, too late. So... Uh, once we get the uh, success automated a bit more, uh, I'm going to actually uh, I've arranged to get a download, an interim download, um, at uh, 5 a.m. This is all U.S. Eastern Time I'm talking. Um, so I'll be able to get that uh, download um, at 5 a.m. and hopefully get the success signals up by 5.30. Um, and you'll find that'll, uh, that'll make a lot of difference to the slippage. Uh, that we get. Uh, one bar counter trends, perpetual nightmare. Yes, they are. 
they're just part of trading. They're a bit like outside bars. Um, they're uh, um, an annoyance, uh, but it's part of trading. You have to learn uh, to deal with that. Uh, which trades to take? We find traders saying, um, uh, you know, I have a number of trades. I don't know which ones to take. Uh, and the biggest problem, of course, is letting the trades run when uh, a lot of our traders get into a trade, they're just busting and desperate to get out of it, whereas uh, you've got to get to the state of equanimity. I mean, it's easy for me to say I've been doing this for 30 years, um, uh, 28 years at least. Um, uh, it's easy for me to say, but eventually you will get to the stage that you'll just see this as a mechanical exercise, um, and that is nirvana. Once you get to that stage, uh, you're just utilizing the same tools uh, all the time to uh, select your trades, to uh, place your stops, uh, etc. cetera, um, and uh, uh, you'll be doing it without uh, passion and uh, without prejudice, as they say. You've just got to do it until you get used to it. Um, rephrasing the real question, I mean, the, the real question about trade is, what do you want from trading? The very first thing is, I want to make a lot of money. Well, fine, we understand that. Um, that's not the real question, though. Uh, the real question uh, before you get to uh, what's your uh, the real question is, <coughs> excuse me, what's your risk appetite? Um, and um, that's very important because uh, the uh, let me see if this has changed for you. Uh, yes, it has. Um, the uh, the uh, risk appetite uh, will yes I think that's all right the risk appetite will determine what sort of a trading program you have um, so uh, there are two forms of risk appetite one's just the uh, exact dollar stops at what stage uh, will you feel that the uh, losses are too much for you um, the other thing of course is time uh, because um, a simple view of trading is that uh, in trending markets, uh, the market will not correct more than three days. Now, that's not strictly true. Often enough, it'll correct four days <coughs> just to make a monkey out of you. <coughs> but that's uh, if you said it didn't connect, correct more than three days, you're up in the 80% as to whether that's uh, uh, true, uh, uh, which it is. So, um, uh, people are very uh, fond of saying, I've got a trading system with allows a three-day retracement. In other words, you can withstand a three-day retracement. Well, I guess it depends on how deep that retracement is because I've seen an awful lot of three-day retracements and I promise you, you can't, you can't stand them. So uh, you really need to, with whatever you finish up doing in trading, uh, you've got to take the best ideas that you can find and then you've got to adapt it so it suits you, suits your personality, suits your personal um, idea of trading and that the real question is, what's your risk appetite? What dollar risk are you prepared to countenance? How many bars, if you're going to uh, trade uh, time against, the, against your position, are you prepared to countenance? Um, and those decisions will establish uh, what sort of a trading system you have. Uh, Jeffy, Jesse Livermore's famous quote that money is made on the long pull, um, that's really a stocks idea. And, uh, you know, um, uh, the last few years we've seen this uh, burst of endless stocks going up, 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 all one way, not going very far, just grinding away remorselessly with plenty of one bar counter trends in it. Um, and to trade that sort of a market, uh, you're going to need a different strategy. Uh, what I try to do personally, <coughs> I like to be very, very close to the market um, and um, I like to rely on the market to volatility. Uh, to make the money, <coughs> and that's worked uh, uh, very well. Uh, let's see our next um, screen. Here it is. Uh, trend. This is the single most important piece of knowledge any trader can have, uh, because trend determines your strategy. Uh, trend is always, uh, don't forget, a function of time. Uh, there are several trends occurring in any market at any point in time. So you can have a daily trend that's up whilst the 60-minute trend is down and vice versa. So we can't talk about trend unless we also define the period uh, that we're talking about. And the old saying is trend is your friend. 
well, the trend is your friend until the end. And with commodities um, in particular, the trend changes are much more, um, uh, much quicker uh, than you would have uh, in a share market. Uh, and a lot of these old sayings actually come from the share market. They're not really terribly applicable to trading uh, futures, uh, which because of the leverage is far more dynamic. Uh, but trend is the number one question you ask yourself every day. <coughs> what is the trend? Um, and we can't really talk about trend uh, without specifying the time. Frame. Excuse me. What are the specific conditions? <coughs> Incidentally, this is another smoke-free uh, webinar, folks. Uh, I've uh, pretty much given up smoking since uh, before Christmas. Um, and uh, uh, I'm uh, sure it's uh, for the benefit. I'm not going to become a zealot about it. I've, I've enjoyed smoking too much for too long. But anyway, it's uh, over now. Uh, so what are the specific conditions that are required to set up a likely term? Well, two questions. Are we trading price or are we trading time? To get a price turn, we require market recognition of a Daniel Code number specific action on the fast stochastic and divergence on the momentum indicator. Now this is very, very basic stuff. This is what we've been telling you and doing uh, since we started the Daniel Code going public, which is now over 10 years ago, incidentally. Uh, some of you have actually been with us that whole time. I'm most grateful. Terrific to have you with us. Um, so uh, this, this is old um, and the point is, it's not only old, it's very, very good uh, because it has this one salient feature that no other system has, uh, that it has these specific numbers, Daniel Code numbers, uh, either blue lines or red lines on our members' charts. Um, and for the uh, markets that we don't uh, cover uh, with full charts, uh, it just got too much. I used to do them all at one stage, but, you know, I was doing 100 plus hours a week and which it all became too much. So uh, we've cut down now to about uh, 15 or 16 markets. But the ones that uh, we're not uh, putting up the full charts, I'm telling you uh, when a signal's created anyway in our TO3 or TO3 plus signals. Um, but this idea of a specific number that a market has to recognize that number um, and that target recognition or market recognition uh, can occur at either a price high, price low or on the bars close. So naturally if the market's going up, we're looking for that target recognition on the price high or the price close. If the market's going down, we're looking for that target recognition on the price low uh, or on the uh, price close. And we need these three conditions to be in place simultaneously. The other idea to think about is if you possibly can trade more than one market. If you trade only one market, you get very obsessed and you also have uh, the problem that markets can go into a, a, a hibernation, a sleepy phase, uh, stop uh, moving much, um, and uh, you won't recognize that till uh, maybe four or five days into that phase. Uh, and um, it's very rare that markets give us that signal before they go into that phase. They tend to do it in the early stage of that consolidation. But if you're trading more than one market <coughs> uh, and one market does go into a, a consolidation phase, which by definition you probably won't make any money out of, you might even lose some money, you'll have other markets that are still performing well. Uh, it's highly improbable. Uh, that if these markets are not correlated, um, it's highly improbable uh, that you'll have a number of markets all performing poorly. Um, as well as that, <coughs> I found that trading a number of markets is very good for your mental health. Uh, when you're just trading one market, uh, it's very easy to get obsessed about that market. When you have a particular uh, loss, uh, you obsess about it on and on and on. Uh, whereas uh, there's actually only uh, limited things you can do about a loss. All you can do with a loss um, is look at your methodology, why you took the trade, um, and see if you've followed your own methodology, followed your own rules, uh, 
um, all about trading needs rules. You must have a rules-based system, uh, otherwise you'll find yourself just um, um, like a, a flower in springtime, as I should say, uh, and, uh, which will come again, you guys. The north winter will end, spring will come again one day. Um, and um, uh, you've got to have rules because uh, you'll be torn uh, betwixt and between. Uh, you need to have those rules so you can rely on them. Uh, trading needs to be a rules-based system. So uh, what makes markets turn? Well, uh, this is the Euro JPY. Um, and this is one of those day uh, where uh, supposedly uh, the Japanese uh, market was open for some reason or other and um, uh, a number of these, not only the ones associated with the yen on one side of them, a number of these markets had this flash crash uh, which was quite extraordinary and I'm not sure if I believe that story either but you can see that even uh, in a state of such dynamic emotion and markets just roaring size of that bar and the snapback rally, you can see that they still abide by the Daniel Code numbers. Um, for those of you um, who haven't looked at this, I do um, implore you to go to the Daniel Code website and look at the market which we post uh, twice weekly. We update twice weekly. You're going to see a lot of them today because as I say, whilst this is old, it's also very, very good. It's the one unique system that if you take everything else that you can do, uh, and there are many ways of setting up a trade, they had one more thing that those other ways don't have, and that is that you have to have this target recognition uh, within 0.1% uh, of the Daniel Code number. And that means that's a huge filter. Um, it gets rid of a whole uh, lot of uh, other trades. Um, so this uh, chart you're seeing now, this is uh, Euro, uh, US dollar. Um, this is a standard DC price turn. Uh, you can see um, at the high, uh, this is Euro, USD, just let me get it up here on the other uh, computer. Here you are, so you can see it's, uh, it's high. Uh, uh, in uh, January the 10th, uh, it had target recognition at the close of the previous bar. We had the overbought stochastic. We had divergence on our momentum indicator, um, and that led to the turn. Look what happens when it goes down to low. We had the blue line there um, at uh, 112878 uh, with the low uh, of the uh, down bar. That's the January the 24th. That lows at... Uh, 112895 um, a handful of a handful of ticks away uh, on the blue line and as well as that it closed right on the black line so we had two different forms of target recognition um, at that low bar which was January the 24th so we've got target recognition <coughs> the fast stochastics already uh, changed over it's on its way back up uh, and we have divergence on the momentum indicator, uh, which is uh, hard for you to see. Uh, but uh, the divergence can be in two different forms. It can either be day-to-day, -day, in other words, divergence against the previous day, or it can be swing-to-swing. -swing. In other words, that swing low that you see under the low bar January the 24th is higher than the previous swing low uh, that was made um, at the previous significant low, uh, which was January the 3rd. So you have your three things, both at that high and at the low. You have target recognition the first thing. You have the stochastic overbought or oversold, and you have divergence on your momentum indicator. This is not propriety momentum indicator, but pretty well all momentum indicators will uh, tell you the same sort of thing. You're looking for divergence on the momentum indicator. Ours is a bit better because um, it avoids dead heat. It, uh, it's got a way of distinguishing between <coughs> the extreme overbought and oversold. So you can see how simple that is uh, and how important that is because if you took every other uh, form of knowledge you have about uh, turns, uh, the thing you wouldn't have is the target recognition uh, at the DC This is the next chart here. 
uh, this is um, uh, got a nice um, through high there. Uh, I'll give you the dates for that. Here we are. So uh, you actually had target recognition on the day before the high. Uh, that fairly big up bar just before the that topping bar uh, had a high of uh, 1319 <coughs> against the red line of 1320. So just one tick variance, not even a hair. Uh, so there was your target recognition. Uh, the fast stochastic was overbought. Uh, in fact, it was already turned, it was on its way down, uh, and you had massive divergence um, in the momentum indicator. It was uh, had been rocketing down for three or four days, uh, and that's what gave you the turn. Okay, so there is that one thing. Look what's happened um, at the next low, this uh, very really, really big bar, uh, which is going to be this fellow right here, um, and that's uh, January the 25th. Look at the close of that bar, 12.44 against the blue line at 12.43, practically perfect. Uh, that's getting it, getting itself set up um, to, to cause a rally. It certainly stopped uh, the down moment. Yeah, okay, so let's move on. Uh, Terry says, thank you, uh, that uh, uh, he says, I'm having trouble with the microphone issues. He's going to... Uh, take this uh, webinar and send it off to go to webinar um, again and see if he can uh, get a solution from him. I do apologize for that if that's what's happening to you. Chart. This is copper. Um, and you can see the uh, false breaks. Uh, and fast moves come from false breaks. It's, uh, it's a part of the um, DC hook structure, uh, which I teach um, at tutorials. Uh, this is the simplest form of it. Um, it's what we call a fast break, a false break, uh, and fast moves come from false breaks. In other words, uh, it's a hundred percent of a rally uh, or a pullback uh, plus a couple of ticks, uh, just enough to uh, get all the stops, um, and uh, then uh, sometimes takes some time before it's off to the races. Uh, but uh, that's where your fast moves come from. So just put that away as black booker. Uh, keep yourself going. Uh, with that. So when is a turn not a turn? This is uh, the US dollar index. Uh, this is also uh, seems to be a constant issue for traders. Um, and um, if we look at uh, the run up uh, in, uh, I'll put my cursor on it, uh, this bar right here, there we are, that's um, uh, January the 18th. It's got a high uh, of 96.050. Um, against uh, the red line at 96.065. Uh, this is that's a three tick difference. This used to trade in two numbers. There wasn't enough volatility in it, so the exchange uh, put in a, a half, an extra number at the end, the third number. The third decimal point became a half to increase the <coughs> apparent uh, volatility. That's uh, the trick they use. So there was your target recognition. Um, the uh, uh, Stochastic hadn't got yet to its uh, overbought stage, which it did the day after, uh, or it might have been there on that day, uh, but certainly you had target recognition. Uh, then you had a couple of uh, little pokes through without much conviction through the red line, and you can see the divergence uh, on the momentum indicators going on all the time, and that caused the turn. So what happened with the turn? You got one bar down. That's all you got, um, and then uh, it rallied up. Uh, and went straight to the black line um, at 96,350, uh, making its high there, just a tick above that, um, at 96,375. Uh, uh, would have been two ticks in the old language, four or five in the new language. Um, and uh, then, of course, it uh, got hit with <coughs> target recognition, uh, well overbought and uh, on its way down stochastic massive divergence in the momentum indicator on a swing to swing basis. So there's that issue of a one bar counter trend. It gets very frustrating. You take that turn, do you hold it or do you get out of the trade? Well, that is the question of trend. If you think that turn, if you think that turn caused a change in trend, 
uh, then you would hold it and try and stay with that trade. If you think it's probably just a one bar counter trend, then you take the continuation trade. A one bar counter trend gives you permission to buy the high or sell the low to get back with the major trend. It's very easy to do that. Keep looking at that in your trading whenever you see a possible one bar counter trend. If you're not convinced that that bar was big enough, <coughs> Uh, or there's been enough price action or time uh, to give you a change in trend, <coughs> then <coughs> take the buy to continue the trend or take the sell if it's the other way. In other words, a one or two or three bar counter trend gives you permission to re-enter with the direction of the main trend. It's a really easy way to pick up a lot of money trading. Uh, you can just flick through your charts and you know you can stick on three or four orders. Uh, just to get back with the trend. If it's elected, um, they're, uh, uh, they're, they're, they're much safer orders than is the norm. Um, okay. Yeah. On edge, couldn't connect on Chrome. Okay, we're having all sorts of problems with this noise. I apologize about that. Let's move on. Uh, here we are. Um, uh, and these minor turns, uh, they give you continuations. Uh, very important that you think about this because uh, this happens to be the um, S&P on this uh, momentous, huge, uh, historic rally we're having. Um, and uh, it bottomed uh, on December the 26th and uh, rallied up uh, one, two, three days up. But the first bar up was so big uh, on its own, it changed the trend to up. Uh, then you had a standard Daniel Code turn there. Uh, the uh, high... Uh, of December the 28th uh, was 2523 against the red line of 2521. That's that little bar right here. Uh, 2523 against 2521. Now, the size of this market now, because the market's gone up and uh, so much, um, the 0.1%, uh, uh, the variance we allow from the actual number, uh, is in fact 25 ticks. Um, on this uh, chart, 10 ticks to a point. Uh, no, this only has a quarter. This is uh, the S&P. I was thinking of gold, excuse me. Uh, so four ticks to, um, uh, to a quarter. Um, and we've got uh, about two, five, two, three. We've got two points. Uh, we've got eight ticks variance um, against an allow 25, almost nothing. Uh, there's your target recognition. Stochastics overbought. Momentum indicators fading away. Down it goes, and um, then you get your continuation, and it goes up. Well, how? Why do you get that? Have a look at this structure. You get the uh, hit on uh, uh, the two five two one red line. <coughs> then you get an inside bar. Then you get a weak down bar, a weak outside bar, and you get another bar down. Okay, are those two bars enough to change the trend? Well. You'd have to put on a channel of some sort, uh, or you'd have to measure uh, that retracement, uh, which we'll do in a moment. Um, and then uh, it continues, um, and off it goes. Let's have a look what happens at that next level. Here it is. What actually happened there is you had a retracement um, at 37.5%. That first uh, number there uh, is 37.5%. Uh, That's the 2445. Uh, which the uh, down bar uh, stopped at, and then the outside bar came after that. But it's only 37.5%. That's not enough to change trend. Um, and uh, that that uh, hit on the 2445, if you look at that structure, that's, that's two bars down in an uptrend. Okay, so one, or two, or three bars. That's a counter trend. Gives you permission to buy the high, of any bar to get back with the trend, and that's exactly what we did there. Um, and off it went, and of course, you know, now it's uh, way up at 27.15. Uh, very, very nice. Uh, because that'll tell you a whole lot about the market. Amongst anything else, it'll tell you uh, what is the trend and what isn't. Okay. Um, major time cycles. Um, I, I, I get a lot of uh, uh, emails about these. Um, don't get too hung up on them. Um, they're, they're, they're fantastic. They're, 
um, amazing if you're if you're very good at them uh, and you can combine them with one of your other signals uh, they're quite deadly uh, but by the same token you can spend an awful lot of time <coughs> on <coughs> these cycles but I want you to just be aware how amazing they are uh, this is what uh, has happened to the S&P recently you've seen some of this before uh, but the blue line on the left of your screen uh, that's this uh, turkey here uh, that's where we're starting it that's the start of the count uh, and it's from there that it's uh, doing all of its uh, counting on uh, let me see I think we've gone past one too far for you here you are this is the first one here um, and you can see that that gave us the high and then it gave us the counter trend high um, as well now, all we're doing is we're starting from a swing high or a swing low in this case we're starting from swing lows because uh, swing li lows uh, we use swing highs as well but that's these are the ones that, that we're on track with at the moment um, and now you've got the 44 giving you the closing high of that whole rally uh, the next bar was the chart high but this is the bar that was the closing high um, and now that's identified that on the 44 cycle uh, it's got the next low on the 59 cycle um, and the next counter trend high on the 62 remember all of these things are accurate to plus or minus one period only uh, so that could be the bar it's on or the next bar as it turned out it went a little higher the next day the 70's done the same thing it's picked one bar before the low the reason for that is that it's valid to start the count from a swing high swing low or a closing high or a closing low um, and that's why it's valid for plus or minus one period either way um, and we just keep moving on here here's the ne next swing low we come to um, that gives us the November high uh, gives us uh, one bar here here we are this uh, missing a mic note is coming up again I do apologize uh, this is same again uh, we're starting the um, uh, there, there's actually a swing low there it's very hard to see that's an outside bar uh, to give you the swing low totally insignificant to look at but look what it gives you it gives you the uh, low uh, uh, in uh, late December um, and, and it gives you the January low as well exactly let's see what else happens we've got the old high on 44 we've got the swing low on 59 we've got the first rally up on the 62 and the next rally up uh, both of which give you a small reaction on the 70 um, have a look <coughs> and a play with this <coughs> this is a weighted moving average um, there's all sorts of different ways of doing this you might try putting on uh, moving average of the high and moving average of the low I'm going to show you that in a moment uh, but this is another way of trading uh, that's quite different to using any indicators what you're doing here is you're allowing the market itself to define where it is in its position so uh, wherever it's below the low below the red line uh, you can say you're in a downtrend um, and whenever it's above the red line uh, you can say you're in an uptrend so naturally that's the place where you want to get high or get long uh, or where you want to get short um, and uh, the first question you ask yourself as we said earlier what's your risk uh, pro profile how much of this uh, how much of this risk um, is actually uh, uh, applicable to you in other words how much of this risk can you bear uh, and the answer to all of that will be not much um, I know uh, I hear people say oh, I can I can handle a drawdown doesn't worry me blah blah never met anyone who can handle a drawdown ever <laughs> when it happens and it happens a few times that attitude gets changed fairly quickly uh, so we've really got some um, interesting um, issues here but you can see just as a general rule and this is a pretty lazy this is just a uh, this is just a, a weighted moving average uh, eight periods very uh, boring um, shifted forward one so you can see where the number will be tomorrow um, and you can see if you did nothing else but be short when you're below the red line and be long when you're above the red line uh, you'd be doing uh, very very well with your trading now you can build this into something much more sophisticated <coughs> have a look at this this is a uh, 
equally simple but a little bit more sophisticated method uh, and this is all I've done here uh, is I've taken um, uh, uh, a moving average of the highest the, the highest high of the last <coughs> four periods and the lowest low <coughs> of the last four periods um, and I've shifted it one so we get a value for tomorrow um, and you can see in trending markets um, this is really um, uh, quite extraordinary the problem is uh, that you leave a lot of money on the table at the turns uh, but do this for your own for your own um, uh, peace of mind see what happens if you take a piece of chart and instead of taking the counter trend trade you simply put your stops on and let the market stop you out there and when you see the next completed bar uh, you can decide whether that's a change of trend or a continuation um, and you'll find uh, that you do remarkably well um, I have clients who are uh, really uh, so obsessed about uh, or so upset by losing trades um, that I get them to trade that way and they're very happy with it um, and uh, you just put your stop where the if you're in a if you're in a downtrend for example put your stop at the point where you think a, a buy side of trade would be um, elected when I say elected but whenever we uh, do analysis to decide whether we'll be a buyer or a seller we don't take it from there and say good <coughs> we'll buy or sell today what we do is we place the uh, order at a given number uh, which is usually two ticks above the true high or two ticks below the true low in futures five ticks above the true high or the true low excuse me the, the phone's mad everything's mad hang on So we've got a faulty microphone, we've got a faulty switchboard. Uh, don't worry about it, we'll survive all that nonetheless. Okay, um, so, <coughs> excuse me, if you take the a point at which the trade would be elected, uh, we say that trade must be elected. In other words, we can say we've got overbought, we've got target recognition, we've got anything that we're thinking of. We are not, um, uh, um, what's the word? Um, uh, forget to be proud enough, uh, too much, too overly optimistic to put a trade on. No, we say that the market has to prove to us that we're right. So, for example, uh, all the way up here through this little rally up in here in December, we get our sell signal, put the order on at that number, and we want the market to turn and go to that number. Uh, that's what uh, gets us uh, into uh, or out of. Um, a trade so that we say at that point we say the trade is elected okay that's most important we never buy or sell on limit we're always doing it on stop we want the market to go to our point of entry to confirm to us um, good Akshay Akshay is happy he wants to get stuck into the moving average trend indicators uh, you'll see that yeah um, and you can see here this is just simple highs and lows uh, but this, <coughs> in a very volatile period, um, has defined the, the, the trend fairly easily. Um, and, uh, in fact, there's only uh, one potential. Here, all the rest, short all the way there. Long here, stay long all the way to this bar. Short all the way to this bar. You've missed one bar only. All the way up to the high. This is your problem. <coughs> that... <clears throat> the sell is accurate, it's correct, but because you've got such uh, different distance between the um, high and the low, uh, it doesn't get elected for another two days. Uh, does that matter in the scheme of things? No, you're short again. Uh, Two-day counter trend here, uh, quite what you'd expect. Down it goes. One-day counter trend, down it goes. Um, and uh, then you get your, eventually you get your turn down the bottom here. Uh, and you can overlay that. Uh, with uh, a dollar stop uh, you can have your limits as to uh, what you're uh, prepared to risk uh, there's a really old form of 
high to the low um, and back up. Measure the first retracement um, and use that as your stop loss. In other words, if you're going to get that bigger retracement than that in this bar here, you can say that the trend has changed. Now, uh, that comes from that old idea of zero balance, but it, it, it's quite zero balance itself doesn't work very well, but the philosophy behind it is correct uh, that um, you can get a turn um, by an overbalance in price, what's called an overbalance. In other words, you get a bigger rally than any previous rally, or you can get an overbalance in time as well. In other words, if your biggest rally you've had, as you've got in this uh, big move down here, well, here's your three bar count trend. Uh, that tells you that <coughs> that's an, that is overbalanced in time. Uh, so you can get an overbalance in price uh, as well as time. But explore and uh, it's used by a lot of um, uh, very uh, successful traders. Um, okay, uh, so uh, you've seen this before, but this is the uh, minor time cycles, minor time signals. Nothing beats it as far as I know. I've been doing this, as I say, for 28 years. Uh, the uh, discovery of time... <coughs> of actual time signals. It's not time cycles because what I found is that time cycles are entirely different to our basic understanding of time cycles is that they're regular uh, and they repeat. Uh, and what I've found is they're not regular. Uh, that um, uh, it's the actual volatility within the market itself that sets the speed of those cycles and the speed of those cycles changes dramatically depending on the speed of the market um, and that's quite a different take. Um, you've seen this stuff, uh, uh, this um, the minor time cycles, uh, that's what uh, you're getting on a trading tutorial with me. His name's Mick, um, he's a Queenslander, he's a good bloke. I've actually known him for probably 20 years uh, on and off, maybe longer, um, but um, uh, never didn't realise he had uh, uh, any desire to become a serious trader. So um, uh, last year he uh, he uh, got in touch with me and said, you know, I really want to get fair think about the trading. Uh, would you teach me? And uh, I said, I'd be delighted to. And uh, he's done the uh, Daniel Code tutorial. So he's actually trading time. Um, and uh, he sent me this uh, um, a week ago. We had a very uh, good week on the TO3s. We had some extra good ones on the TO3+, plus, which you didn't see. Uh, but the point is this is a guy who's been interested in trading uh, for 20 years at least that I know of. And now he says, for the first time in my life, income is pouring in 24 hours a day. Um, so... This stuff works. The stuff that I teach you at the Daniel Code Trading Tutorials, um, uh, you can have see as many of these as you like. Uh, and it's very gratifying to me because I've got people not only like Mick, um, who I personally have known he's been interested in trading for 20 years. This is the first time in his life uh, that he's been regularly earning money. Sue uh, up in North Queensland and Cairns, very wet up there. You're going to get uh, the rain from Rocky soon, uh, Sue. I hope you're uh, safe or... Uh, even better out of cans and up the up the uh, tablelands. Um, uh, she's another one been trading for a long time. She's never seen a trading program uh, that was profitable, and now um, trading what I've taught her at the Daniel Code uh, tutorial. She's making money all the time, and uh, uh, it's wonderful. It's uh, rewarding for me as well. So, uh, thanks, Mick. I'm glad it's going so well. Stick to your knitting. Uh, just do exactly what I've taught you um, and uh, stick to it. There'll be uh, some extra good parts and some not such good parts. Uh, but that's the nature of uh, life as well as trading. Uh, stick to what you have. Um, here's our first um, uh, look at this week um, in uh, success. Uh, it's still free, incidentally. We've had... Uh, um, and uh, we've still got a couple more things to do. Uh, once we get it all bedded down, we'll start, uh, we'll release some uh, half a dozen um, uh, Forex trades. Uh, we'll give you the success signals on those as well. Uh, so this is what's happened the last three days. They've been very ordinary days. 
<coughs> in six s <coughs> there haven't been any really big moves or exciting but you can see uh, it's uh, down 844 it's got an open equity of uh, over three thousand dollars so effectively it's a uh, net two and a half thousand or so um, in three days it uh, made its first trade on uh, uh, on Tuesday morning so it's had trading for Tuesday Wednesday um, and Thursday and it's, they're fairly ordinary results but that's what you can expect with the success uh, so if you haven't already had a look at it I suggest you do um, it's also a way of um, I'll hold your hand with it for a while and uh, teach you to hold the trades while you're with the trend um, and that's the, the key to the whole thing Uh, a number, in fact, almost all our charts, these are the members' charts, um, they were updated uh, on uh, Wednesday night, um, so the only new trading on them is Thursday, but just have a look at Thursday's trading. And I'm trying to make the point to you of how absolutely amazing markets are when you're measuring them against the Daniel Code. This is the Aussie USD, uh, look where it closed um, today, uh, there it is. Uh, we had the uh, red line at 72.70. What's the close? 72.71. I said I've got a lot of these because I think this is, I think this is the most amazing piece of, um, uh, what shall I say, technique that I've ever seen in trading. Um, and uh, yes, I uh, found it myself, uh, which is why I suppose I think it's so important. But if you take any any realistic appraisal and look at it this is the only system that you get where you have can say that you have to have target recognition at one of these known numbers before the market will turn how important is that well nothing else has it I mean you know your Fibonacci's and what have you they're just estimates these are not these are numbers created by the market itself on the Daniel code ratios and you, you judge for yourself how accurate they are. Uh, on the Daniel Code website, uh, there's a link saying Chart Archives, uh, which has got every chart in it that I've uh, created for members in the last uh, bit over 10 years now, just over 10 years, uh, 10 years and a couple of months, and there's uh, 35,000 odd charts in there. You'll be hard pressed to find one that's turned anywhere except at a Daniel Code number. Now, occasionally, very occasionally, uh, it will appear as if a market's turned not at a Daniel Code number. And when that happens, I'll put in the number that it has turned at and say this turned at a, a different sequence or a different uh, ratio that was not on your member's chart. It doesn't happen very often. Maybe two or three times a year uh, is all. Uh, so let me run through these charts with you and have a look. Make up your own mind. You're looking at uh, where Thursday's bar was. Well, this one, this is... Uh, uh, CAD Chief, this has uh, given you a double uh, dose of learning. It had, uh, uh, on Wednesday, it had its high at 75.84 uh, against uh, 75.78, and it closed um, at 75.60 against the other red line at 75.60. Uh, there's uh, Euro USD. Why did this turn today? Well, uh, it's halfway through its turn, isn't it? Uh, yesterday, you had target recognition. Uh, and you had, I've only got the slow stochastic on this, you had the rest of the conditions as well. Um, this is New Zealand USD. Yesterday, went right to the blue line and stopped. Today, look where the close is. Right to, to when... At 69.16 against 69.14. Two ticks, variant. Um, it's quite extraordinary. Uh, and I'm... Um, I'm going to bore you by taking you through almost all our charts. Have a look at them. This is the US dollar uh, Canadian uh, yesterday, uh, Wednesday. Uh, it made its low, big bar down. Uh, uh, 13123, but the blue line uh, is sitting there uh, right underneath it at one three double one seven. Uh, with the low being 13119. Two ticks out of God knows how many thousands. Thousands. Okay, let's move on. Have a look what it did yesterday. Here it is. This is the March contract. Uh, yesterday, that's uh, Wednesday, 
uh, it closed at uh, 54.23 against the blue line of 54.21. That's target recognition. Uh, so today it roared up, hit the red line, uh, which was uh, sitting there at, uh, uh, there's two of them. There's uh, one at uh, 55.28 um, and there's another one at 55.45. Um, and uh, this made it high at 55.37, right between the two of them. Turned around, key reversal bar heading down. <coughs> Excuse me, probable sell on uh, Friday. Uh, here's the uh, next one. <coughs> here's the next one. Uh, this is the US dollar index, uh, DX. Um, uh, you can look at its high when it made its turn. It uh, was on uh, January the 24th at uh, 96.375 against 96.350. Forget the new half at the back. It's really 35 to 37. It's two ticks, but it's now become four ticks because they've added the half, if you can understand what I'm saying. Uh, perfect target recognition. What, why have we got a probable turn today? Well, yesterday, Thursday, the close was 95.030 against the blue line at 95.035. One tick, one minor tick. There's your target recognition. So you get a reaction to that. The reaction is probably a turn, probably a buy uh, tomorrow, uh, Friday. Uh, here's gold. Uh, just rolled over the new contract. Uh, here we are. And look what it's done. Gapped up, big gap, left a gap there, high for the day, 1331.1 <coughs> against 1331.5, four ticks variance. We would allow 0.1% is 13 ticks, uh, and you've got um, a variance of um, uh, four ticks, 1331.1. Amazing, isn't it? Okay, all of this just... TF, here it is, RTY now, isn't it? It used to be TF when it was on the... 4.6 uh, against 15.04.1 uh, is the red line um, and that uh, uh, five, five ticks uh, variant. Okay, I hope this is charts. You don't have to look through any more of them. So uh, these time cycles um, are vary and are variable um, and there's more than one time cycle at work. Uh, and by using fractals of the DC ratio as the major ones which you've seen, we can identify almost all of the short-term time cycles. Um, and they're conditional until they're elected. But we can vary the operative time cycle to support daily signals. And we can combine those time cycles to support swing trading. That's going to be the next thing we come out with. Uh, we have both, you've seen this screen, I said this optimistically a month or so ago, we have both a manual and a semi-auto trade program. Uh, well, you've been seeing the manual one. You've been seeing uh, that uh, with the success for uh, some months now. I start that actually in September, uh, to January. So we're into our uh, fifth month of that. Uh, uh, that free trial that was going to last three weeks is now um, up at five months. But there you are. Uh, good luck to you. We'll uh, get it right. Um, and um, uh, the auto trade version of it will be available uh, uh, very soon. Uh, my guy, uh, IT guy, has been overseas for uh, most of January. Um, he went to a wedding uh, in a nice part of the world uh, and he's been away for most of January, so uh, we've been to Sandstill for a while, but we'll. If you are interested in trading time in particular, if you want to be a super trader, uh, let me know. Email me, jneedham at thedanielco.com. Uh, shoot me your phone number where you live so I don't uh, tend to ring you uh, in the middle of the night um, and I'll be happy to call you uh, and talk about your trading uh, with a view to your doing the Daniel Code uh, video tutorial which has uh, been marvellous, absolutely marvellous. Uh, at the Daniel Code website, just uh, uh, find the link uh, on the uh, home page uh, get a username and password, um, just hit that uh, free trial register button uh, and uh, if you haven't already uh, uh, started using Genesis Trade Navigator 
or had a trial of it, uh, we can arrange that for you as well. Uh, this is our complaint. Not start trading until you know how to trade. Um, more money has been lost with people getting enthusiastic and jumping into trading uh, before they um, have uh, got the method right. Uh, once you've learned how to trade, uh, you'll be on your way. But I do urge you to take the trouble to learn carefully. It's very easy to lose your money trading futures. Uh, okay, well, thanks, guys. I hope uh, we can get this uh, microphone issue sorted. Terry sounds very determined, so let's see how we go with that. Um, and uh, uh, what's the likely path on 30-year Ronda? What's a Ronda, actually? What's a Ronda? Good, John. You enjoyed that. That's great. Thank you. You've got some rain down there at Coffs as well. Boy, send some up here, will you? We haven't got any at all. Oh, what are we doing with 30-year 30, uh, 30 bonds? Uh, let's have a look at the uh, master file over here. Stand by. Stand by. Okay, stand by. Uh, Akshay, here we are. Here we are. Well, um, I'll show it to you next week if you like. It's amazing that uh, we reached in uh, August uh, 2016, we reached the absolute high of the Daniel Code trading channel, which has been going since 1998. You've seen this long-term chart before. Um, and it uh, got to two standard deviations from the mean. Now, they're not your mathematical standard deviations. They're Daniel Code standard deviations and it reached two standard deviation from the mean. It's been down, 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 um, and <laughs> uh, now it's bounced uh, off the, as far back as, let me see the date on that, here we are, uh, November 2018, December 2018. It's bounced absolutely the mean, uh, and the mean has ended uh, in March 2017. It's, that's where it stopped because it uh, was uh, met the test at that stage. Uh, wow. Uh, I guess it rallies uh, from here. Um, Akshay, my guess is it uh, goes looking for the uh, median, uh, which is up at about 161 or thereabouts. Uh, I think uh, that, that stop is fairly definitive. Uh, where it is, and of course the Fed's got cold feet. Uh, they don't want to frighten the horses anymore, um, so they're going to uh, give the market uh, whatever it is it wants. Okay, great to have you with us, folks. Uh, thanks for your forbearance, and we'll uh, we'll see how we go uh, with um, uh, fixing this microphone problem uh, before we talk to you next. All the best. Bye bye.